Hello, my name is Keith Rucker. Today, I'm out at the Georgia Museum of Agriculture, and uh, I'm out here in the wood shop side of the building. I thought we'd do a little episode on some machinery maintenance. Uh, what I'm standing next to is a Powermatic Model 143 uh, bandsaw. Again, this is on the wood shop side of the shop. Uh, however, this bandsaw is interesting in that it has the gearbox in the back where it can be used for cutting wood or metal. It will slow down the speed for cutting metal. Uh, I was out here actually using this bandsaw uh, just the other day uh, for a metal cutting job, had slowed it down, and I noticed when I was changing the blades out uh, that the tires on this bandsaw were in really, really bad shape. Uh, in fact, it was just, a, just about completely gone on this bottom wheel. There's just a little small, narrow section there in the very center, uh, which kept from having that bump, 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 that flat tire. Um, so if you're not familiar with bandsaws, you got the wheels in here. This is a 14-inch bandsaw, and of course bandsaws come in a lot of different sizes, but uh, you've got this metal wheel in here, on the, and on the surface of this metal wheel is a rubber tire. And the purpose of the rubber tire is that's what the, the bandsaw blade rides on, and the rubber protects the blade and uh, prevents it from uh, coming in direct contact with the metal on the wheels, which of course would dull uh, the blade. So today's job is we're going to remove uh, the tires off of uh, this bandsaw and uh, replace them with brand new tires and go through that entire process. As with any machine maintenance job, the most important thing is safety. And uh, notice I've got this machine completely unplugged from the wall. There's no way that it can turn on while I'm working on it. And as my general practice, I've got this power cord laying right here where I can see it. So any time that I'm working on it and I get in a hairy situation, I can look over and see that plug sitting there and know beyond a shadow of a doubt that there's no way that this machine's going to turn on. So the first challenge that we've got is we have to get the old tires off. And uh, I'm going to start on this upper wheel. And this, this tire is actually in much better shape than the bottom one. In fact, I could probably get by without even replacing it at all. But uh, I, I got to looking at this, this tire and it's got some issues that I don't like. Uh, this one, I don't know who put this on or when it was put on, uh, but it's not a solid rubber ring. This is actually two pieces of rubber. There's a joint right here and there's a joint about opposite of it, where um, right here, where it was two pieces that were put on here and glued in place. Really, on bandsaw tires, it should be like a big rubber band, a solid piece that has no joints in it because every time that blade goes over that little track right there, you're gonna get a little bump in the blade. So we're going to remove this one as well as the bottom one and uh, try to replace both of these tires. And again, I have no idea what kind of glue was used on this in the past or how much trouble this is going to be off. I'm going to start with a putty knife and uh, see if we can uh, get this off and uh, go from there. Here's half of it. All right, we got that tire off. Um, I can see a lot of residue on here of this old glue, so we're going to have to work on trying to get that off as well. Uh, we really want to get this down to the uh, bare metal on this wheel, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and get this bottom wheel off and then we'll come back and figure out how to get this uh, glue off. Alright, get down to this bottom wheel, and this one working a little bit tighter quarters, so maybe you can see this. Alright, that one was a lot easier. All right, I'm back up on the top wheel now, and I'm trying to get this uh, layer of glue off. And um, what appears to be working is I've just got a little, um, just a razor blade here, and I'm just very carefully coming in here up underneath that layer of glue and just working my way around. And uh, this is going to be a time-consuming, tedious job. I'm not going to bore you with watching this whole thing, but I did want to show you uh, what I'm having to do. And I imagine once I get this done, I'm going to have to come back in here with some light sandpaper or something and just uh, get this totally finished cleaned up but um, it looks like the razor blade is doing a pretty good job of getting it off. We've got a pretty nasty front coming through so you can probably hear the rain on the roof in here um, right now so fortunately I'm 
out of the weather. Maybe the thunder and lightning won't get too bad. Uh, anyway, back to the project here. I did a little experimenting and uh, got some acetone. I tried a couple different solvents and acetone seems to be removing this glue on this wheel pretty good. So I wanted to just throw that in. So I'm just taking a, a clean rag here and going through here and wiping this off. I'm having to rub in some spots pretty hard, but uh, it's taking it off real nice. So we're gonna use this to clean this wheel up. We're moving right along now. I've got this uh, wheel all cleaned up, real good and smooth. Uh, as I was sitting there using it, I was thinking, you know, I used the three S's, the three S method I used. I, I scraped it with a razor blade. Uh, I used sandpaper to clean it, and then I used the solvent. So anyway, I just made that up. Sounds good, the three S's. But that worked in this situation. That's the main thing. Actually, uh, the acetone really did a good job. And between that and coming back in there with that razor blade and scraping, and then finally, after I got through, I just kind of take some sandpaper and just went around it till it was good and smooth. So now I've got a very good clean and flat surface to glue this new tire to. Very important. Preparation, getting this ready. Make sure you don't have any uh, little dots or buttons or little imperfections along this wheel because that wheel will go right through the tire. And if you got a bump on the wheel uh, from where you didn't get the glue off, you're going to have a bump in your tire later on. And we really want to do a good job. So we're just about ready to start putting the tires on themselves. So. These are the actual tires. As you can see, it's just kind of a little rubber band. Uh, you order these to fit the diameter of the wheel that you're running, and they cut them usually to the, to the correct uh, thickness or width. Um, and uh, again, I got these from uh, Woodworkers Tool Works, and I've mentioned them before. They're a great resource for all kinds of uh, stuff, and I highly recommend them. Uh, <coughs> I gave uh, Bobby a call up there uh, last week when uh, I realized we need new tires on this, and. Uh, you know, he had stuff to me within just a day or two, and uh, he sent the tires and the glue, everything, very reasonably priced. Uh, I think, you know, to do this uh, tires and glue and everything for this whole machine, it's about $40, give or take a little bit uh, with the shipping. I actually haven't gotten the actual, the, the final invoice from him yet, uh, but it's going to be somewhere around that ballpark figure, $40, $50. So it's really not a very expensive uh, thing to do and really tune up a uh, machine that's needed. So anyway, this is the rubber band tire. And when you look at it, um, you got the outside and they come to you. You can tell the outside because it's outside when it gets to you. But also if you look on the inside, the inside is real smooth. The outside is smooth too, but it's, it's rougher than the inside. The inside's kind of almost got a gloss finish to it. So uh, what we need to do is actually take a piece of sandpaper and rough this up just a little bit. And that's gonna give that glue something to stick to and we actually glue it on there. So let me grab a piece of sandpaper and we'll get to this. So all I'm doing here is I'm just taking this piece of sandpaper and I'm just scuffing it. I'm not really trying to, to get it, you know, really deeply scored or anything like that. I'm just putting a little scuff on it, on that smooth side, on the inside. All right, that's scuffed up all the way around now. And again, that just gives something for that glue to, to adhere to so it's not just a real slick surface on there. Just something for it to get into and keep it from sliding off. All right, now that we've got the tire scuffed up, it's ready to actually go back onto the wheel here. And uh, this can be somewhat of a challenging job in itself, just trying to get this rubber band uh, stretched over this wheel, particularly if you're working by yourself. If you have two people, it's fairly easy to do. But if you're working by yourself, you really need kind of that third hand. Uh, if you look in the literature that uh, comes with some of these bandsaw tires, particularly some of the older literature, what they recommend was a method where you took a C-clamp and a little piece of wood and you clamped the, the tire to the wheel so that it held it in place. You did it on the top and the bottom and then you just kind of stretched it on. I've actually used that method. It works great. The problem with it is, is that over the years when they've looked at bandsaw tires that were put on using that method, uh, after running them for several years or whatever, in many cases, that clamping pressure when you put it on will actually damage the tire. You don't see it at the time, but it will wear over time and you'll get a flat spot in those areas and you have to replace that tire prematurely. So now uh, the, they pretty much recommend not doing it that way to use a different method uh, to get it on there. Again, if you got two people, you can usually just kind of stretch it on by hand. I'm working by myself today. So this is a method that uh, again, Bobby at Woodworkers Tool Works, where I got these uh, tires from, he recommends this. He's actually got a little short video or two out on the on the uh, on YouTube that shows this uh, method, and it works very well. So, I've got a piece of cloth here. This is just a strip of a piece of a T-shirt off of a shop rag, 
and uh, I'm just going to wrap it around my wheel right here uh, one time and then I'm going to take my tire making sure that that scuff side that we did is down I'm going to lay it on top of that and I'm going to take my my piece of cloth here you can use a piece of rubber any kind of flat material that you have will work but you want to wrap that around there a couple of times and uh, what this is going to do is it's basically just going to hold that tire in place long enough for us to stretch it onto the wheel so that's probably good right there let me uh i'm just gonna tie it off here i don't know that you even have to tie it off but i'm going to tie it off all right so that should hold that in place right there and now i'm just going to take it and i'm going to pull on it and stretch it around until i get this uh tire on there we go that simple the tire is on and I can kind of just uh, center it up on the wheel now and then we'll just remove this piece right here you say well you got that piece up underneath it no problem the tire stretches real easily and we can get it out without any problem at all we'll just pick it up right there and boom it's off so that tire is on and uh, we're just about ready to start the gluing process. Now that the tire is on the rim, the next step is that we want to get it stretched and equalize the tension all the way around this rubber tire. So when we put it on, it was uh, kind of strapped in place. We stretched it, put it on there. But what can happen is, is it might be tighter in one place than another. And you really haven't given that band a chance to equalize across there. So it's a fairly simple process. I put a mark here on the wheel where I know where I started from. And I'm just using a piece of metal rod here. You can use a wooden dowel. It really doesn't matter. You just need to put something round in here. And we're going to put that in there uh, and just kind of roll this around uh, the entire wheel. And do this at least once. I usually like to do it maybe a couple of times. Uh, it just gets everything equalized out. And uh, once we get all the way around, we're going to stop. I've already been around there once. Make sure the tire stays on the the wheel uh, it will slip around on you if it does just slide it over no big deal so anyway we get back to right there so we have been around twice and at this point I'm going to leave this in because I'm going to use this to help me put the glue in there it's going to separate the two pieces to put the glue in and now comes the more tedious part um, I have here a little bottle of uh, this is fast tick all-purpose cement this is basically just a a contact cement. This is what was supplied uh, from Woodworkers Toolworks when I got the uh, wheels to use as an adhesive. And there's lots of different types of adhesives that you can use. I recommend that you contact whoever you get your tires from and get the adhesive that is recommended for those specific tires. So tire material can be made out of rubber, it can be made out of um, uh, polyurethane. There's all kinds of different materials out there and depending on what you're using you need to use the right glue for that. I have used in the past kind of a two-part epoxy system that has worked real well. Uh, this is what Bobby recommended on these tires. This is what I'm going to use. And uh, so first thing, you know, we've already got this cleaned up, uh, which we make sure we need to do, and that's already been done. We've already got the tire on here. For this to work, though, you need to put a layer on both sides. You need to put it on the wheel and onto the, um, the tire and uh, let it go on there. So we're just going to basically use this uh, same... A piece of metal here to give us some space and I'm gonna go around and take my little uh, brush and go in behind that and work my way all the way around the tire so uh, let's do it real quick and I'm just gonna put this in and it's gonna make a little bit of a mess this will clean up so be sure to brush both sides of it there and then you just roll your roll it around all the way around a little bit at a time it takes some time and don't worry about it uh, making a mess like I said this will clean up I think I am gonna get a piece of cardboard or something to put down on this table just so that it makes clean up down there a little bit easier that done 
I'm just going to uh, go around my wheel, make sure that I've got it more or less um, centered up on there, make sure it's not sticking out on one side more than the other before it sets up. If it sticks out a little bit one side or the other, uh, no big deal. Uh, we're actually going to trim this later, or you can trim it if need be. This is a pretty good fit on this one, but sometimes they're, they're oversized, and that's fine uh, if they are. Um, you can trim them up later. And don't worry about if you get a little bit of stuff on the surface of the wheel, because we're actually going to clean all that up in a later step. So uh, if it gets a little bit messy, uh, no big deal. All right, so now we're just going to let this uh, cure and set. We've let the um, glue dry on these now for several hours. Um, you know, it'd probably be best if you let it dry overnight. Really and truly, I think that with this uh, particular cement that I was using here, um, it's, it's going to pretty much be adhered almost immediately. Uh, but just follow the recommendations on whatever glue you're using. I know on some epoxies they recommend uh, 48 hours. Um, and I'm going to probably, uh, just for the essence of showing you this video, go ahead and show you the process, but I'm going to probably actually wait a day or two to do this, again, just to make sure I'm not in a big hurry. Uh, but the tires are on here, and with some people, you know, that's, they're just going to walk away from the job and call it done at that time. But really, I don't consider putting tires on a new band, on new tires on a bandsaw, that job done until you crown the tires. That is a very important step, and it's one that quite honestly is often overlooked. Uh, the reason you want to crown the tires is for a couple of reasons. When I say crown, you know, normally that, or the way it is now, that, that, that top of that tire is flat. And what you want to do is just put a little bit of an angle on it so that it comes up. Just one or two degrees, not very much at all. And that does a couple of things. First off, uh, if you know anything about uh, pulleys, uh, uh, running a, a, a pulley or a belt under tension, when this wheel is turning, it's basically just like a belt and a pulley. Uh, but if you have a crowned pulley, that belt is always going to run to the top of that crown, and it's going to help keep that belt true and staying on the pulley. Now, the pulley's out of a line, yeah, it's, it's going to run off one side or the other, but within reason, having that crown will really help keep the, uh, the, the belt, or in this case, the bandsaw blade, tracking properly. Uh, and the other thing that putting the crown on there will do for you is that, you know, you have uh, uh, basically the flat part of the blade, then you have the teeth on one side, and those teeth are set, so they're flared out one way or the other, so the, the cut is actually wider than the blade itself. And because of that, when this is going around and around on this bandsaw tire, if that is flat, if the, belt, if the top of this is flat, there's no room for those, the set in the teeth to have a place to lie. So the crowning does both of those things for you very well. Now there's lots of ways that you can crown um, bandsaw tires. In fact, if you don't believe me, go to the uh, Old Woodworking Machines, OWWM.com discussion forums, and just search out the topic, and you will find page after page after page of ways that people do this. And generally speaking, I would say that none of those ways are wrong, uh, but as in working in the machine shop, there's often more than one way to skin a cat. There's more than one way to get a job done. I'm going to show you how I do it. It's quick, it's easy, it's fairly painless. I guess some could maybe argue that it's not maybe quite as accurate as some other methods, and I couldn't argue with, on, with you on that. But at the end of the day, um, this is going to get you really as, as close as you need to be. Um, and basically all I'm going to do, uh, a lot of people, they'll pull the tire, the wheels off, put it on another machine, they'll put on a lathe and do it uh, if they got a lathe large enough. I've seen uh, jigs on a milling machine, I've seen, seen jigs where they mount the tire and, and cock it one or the other and use them on a drill press. I, I've seen a lot of different ways of doing this. I like to just do it on the machine itself. Don't bother with taking it off, uh, make it as easy as possible. And again, my super simple uh, technique, all it involves is a stick uh, that you can find in any shop and a, a piece of sandpaper. I think this is 60 grit sandpaper. And uh, all I'm gonna do is I'm just going to use this uh, and just sand uh, that crown on the wheel. Now, on the bottom wheel, it's very easy. You just turn the machine on and the wheel's turning and you don't, and, and you don't have to worry about that. The top wheel, is, a, is an idler, and of course when the bandsaw blade is on there, it's spinning, but the bottom wheel is what's powering it. I'm going to show you on the top wheel just because it's easier to see. It's kind of hard to get down here below and see this on this machine, but all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this little stick. 
I'm going to, I've got a little piece, in, a little area in here, a little lip in here that I can rest this on to kind of help keep it uh, uh, somewhat straight. And I'm just going to spin this by hand and um, we're just going to sand that off. And you can actually, I don't know if you can see it in the video or not, but you can see the rubber coming off the top. I don't have much of an angle. This is probably, you know, a degree at the most, but that's all you need. It's just a little bit of relief. And I'll do that on one side. I'll then uh, put that same thing on the other side and um, in just a little bit at a time. You don't have to put a lot of pressure. You don't have to have a lot of speed. Again, obviously on the bottom wheel, it's turning much faster. It gets done much faster. Uh, but that's the process. I do want to let this glue cure a little bit more before I actually do this job, but I wanted to go ahead and show you the process uh, so that you can see how it's done. Once you've got a little bit of a crown on the top of these wheels or these tires, uh, the job is pretty much complete at that time. And it's probably going to take me 15-20 minutes uh, to sand uh, that crown into both the top and bottom wheel right here on the machine. That's how I do it. Uh, you're, if you've got a better way, that's great. Uh, I, you know, again, this is how I do it and it has worked well for me in the past and I, uh, I, I recommend it as a, as a way to get it done. So there you go. Uh, that's the process of changing out the tires on a bandsaw. You know, this is a, uh, I'm going to call it a fairly small machine, 14 inch. Some people would say this is a big machine. I have a 36 inch uh, crescent angle bandsaw, one where the whole back frame will tilt back to 45 degrees. Uh, some people call them a ship saw. So I, I actually have done this several times on, on large 36 inch diameter wheels. Uh, the same process can be used on smaller wheels. Uh, it really doesn't matter the size, the make, the brand. Uh, I will make a comment though that some of the uh, uh, bandsaws that are out there now that are uh, newer bandsaws, uh, instead of having just gluing this onto the uh, rim of the wheel like this, there's actually a little groove that that tire fits that into. And in that case, you just uh, take the old one out and pop a new one in. And in a lot of cases, they don't even glue those tires in at all. They just kind of sit in that channel. Uh, and they're a little bit easier to replace uh, if you don't use any glue. Uh, some people do glue them in place and then you have to, uh, they can be a little more aggravating to get apart. Uh, but again, it's basically the same process. Uh, I do always recommend crowning. I will comment too that like on my Crescent 36 inch uh, bandsaw, it's interesting that the wheels themselves are crowned, so they actually machined a crown into the wheel itself so that when you put the tire on here, your tire will have a crown on it because the wheel is crowned. Even though that, I, that is that way, it makes the crowning process a lot simpler, but I will still at least touch it up with some sandpaper using the same technique uh, because you can have some slight differences in the thickness of this uh, rubber tire going around here. It may not be much, it may be where you didn't quite get all the tension out, it may be just in the thickness of the material itself. But by hitting it with that sandpaper, another thing that you're doing is, is you're getting the wheel turning perfectly round. You're truing up that wheel so it's perfectly round. So even if your, your wheel itself is, is, is crowned, still just take a few minutes and uh, make sure that everything is, is running uh, exactly true. Uh, sometimes I'll even come in here with a dial indicator, uh, put it right here on the, on the tire and spin it around and make sure that I haven't got any, uh, any run out in the tire itself uh, or even in the wheel itself. Uh, hopefully it's not, it's not in the wheel but in the tire. Uh, and that's a good judge to see whether you've got these wheels trued up and crowned properly. So that's all for this episode. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you can find this useful. Uh, this method will apply uh, for both metal cutting and woodworking bandsaws. So this will be either uh, machine shop or wood shop. Uh, can go either way and as I mentioned before this bandsaw here is actually set up to do both metal and wood cutting. Thank you for watching.